Um, this is the 63rd episode and once again if you miss anything um, I have to talk very fast so uh, if you miss anything please type in the program name in YouTube I have uploaded all the uh, past episodes so you can watch it slowly and understand you know the relationship between different languages as the program uh, name I suggested I propose that you know uh, we do not look at uh, our language family as trees we are just uh, sharing one single core it comes out like one organism like the basket starfish in just every single one is just a branch okay it, we all started at the same time you know so uh, the, the family tree business is just kind of a little bit ushering in hierarchy so I propose that it should be changed and of course you know I present it from a female and also Asian point of view instead of a Eurocentric macho view so I hope you know I can at least you know uh, give you something to think about you know if I cannot convince you so uh, I will start from the very beginning of today's slides um, today I'm going to start uh, uh, I mean I'm going to continue with the X uh, the cross which you call Tao Oop, for some reason yes uh, okay here is the basket starfish you can see that you know the center the core that we are sharing I suggested we are not uh, separated uh, tree families because you know if we think like that you know it will usher in human hierarchy so uh, instead of that you know I uh, proposed that it needed to be changed and uh, first of all um, last week I ended with this slide I say that not one race can advance well on its own and human beings cannot uh, um, in uh, progress without interchanges of ideas and actually today I read a book um, about uh, the uh, American president uh, Franklin Roosevelt in 1936 he said this you know we are still in the making it is well for us to remember that this America of ours is the product of no single race or creed or class. So I think it actually matches what I'm comparing now. I compare all the different family trees, so-called, to show you that they are just branches of the same family, okay? So again, uh, I have, I'm talking about the symbols of leader. Uh, when it comes down to writing, you would know this uh, A, you know, in the Western system. And actually the A is come out from the uh, bull head and it just keep changing, shifting around, it become like this. And actually the A and the K uh, share a very, very common origin uh, because, you know, you can see that the K is actually another direction of that bull head. And uh, if you don't agree, I can show you a Greek word creos creo is actually a ramp and then uh, the same word when it comes to latin from change from greek to latin it become arias you will see that uh, if i uh, transcribe it it will be k r i o s this is a r i e s so basically the a is read by the latin by the roman as an a that symbol right there is read by the Greek as a K, so you will understand that, you know, in ancient time, you know, the earlier writings like that, it can be actually read into different sounds and different words. And once again, you know, I uh, when I talked about the difference between A and K, I talked about the uh, Eastern system like the Sanskrit. Uh, the first consonant in the Sanskrit is a Ka, okay? So uh, the A and the Ka always hold, you know, part of, as the leader of the alphabet, that's a sound, okay? But the form itself, you know, like the Western system, is always the K, this animal head right there. But it is very interesting as time went by. You can see that it changed from a bull into representing a ram. Uh, both of them are horned animal, of course, but you will see in the following slides later. But uh, today I'm going to talk about the A and the, and the Tau, okay, in the Phoen uh, Phoenician system. But uh, in order to prove to you that the K is also as uh, Maintain state in the also in the English system as the leader. Uh, I will give you the the old English word quen, which become your new word queen, and also the king. As you know, these are also leader of the family. But I'm not going to that direction now. Today I'm going to concentrate on these two symbols of leaders. And why I may say I am saying that? Of course, you already understand why the A is leading the alphabetic pack, and then uh, the tau is uh, actually the 
end of the uh, whole uh, alphabetic cycle and in the phonetic system uh, and in, in the Phoenician system and we understand it uh, pronounced as Tao okay and then interestingly if I go back to the Sumerian cuneiform you will see that either the leader or the priest you know they actually carry the sound of two the same way the Chinese oracle bones you know we say Do or Tao and then you will see that it's also representing the leader the way okay so you will see that this cross is somehow right there and then you will also see that the cross is there but it it's used here to represent the road that we are walking. Interestingly, there are a lot of subtle uh, um, similarities. And okay, so uh, why is it when the Greek uh, dominates this world, you know, it become, uh, they, uh, they all started to use the omega as the end of the alphabetic uh, cycle. And because, you know, at that time, gradually religion changes and then they actually begin that there is a tiny little gap between this whole big cycle of of life and this actually represented by the Tao itself as you will see so um, it's very obvious that, that the ancient always have a cyclical view of the world and of the universe and this little gap is all the religious people are paying attention to how do we bridge that gap what make us crossing from this world to the other world this is what the Greek was concentrated on and then if you uh, compare it to the Chinese you will see this animal head again this is Chinese Chinese, we use it to represent, you know, circular motion and, and circle something. As you see, also it's the A sign, the animal sign, the unseen energy that is circling around. So it's very, very similar to this X because the X is very um, uh, abstract. So uh, we cannot, you know, take uh, any uh, pictograph out of it, but you can understand that it's also, you know, rolling around. It is representing uh, some kind of action. And so when the Greek comes, you know, so who dominates this very important religious world? It is, of course, crystals. You know, if you uh, look at Greek itself, the way they write crystal is this bearer of the cross right there. And then the risto. The risto, as I said, you know, in the last couple, uh, last two episodes, it's already the the ra the the ao sound the ra the ris the resh the the the, the, the ras all representing you know the head like in raja like in royal and it seems that at this time you know people began to use the ao also as the head apart so you will see that this is the head that actually leads you to and to crossing a little gap right there. This is a crystal. That's why uh, in the Bible you always see that people ask that is Jesus the real crystal? Um, and that means, you know, is he really the last one that lead us as the leader? Okay, so you will see that that's why you know it always say the last will be the first and the first will be the last so these two alphabet and these two concepts are always intertwined if you don't believe let us look at the pagan world if you pay attention to the ancient greek jewelry you will always see that you know they will always have a, a, a bangle with two heads you know either facing each other or as the time went by you will see the roman adopted that but at this time you will see the macho world completely sets in the Roman a very macho world. In the Greek world, you still find a little bit uh, remnant of the ancient goddess world and the female feminine dominated world. But in the Roman world, the patriarch, patriarch completely took over. So this genus right there, that's the, big, uh, the, the, the etymology of your word ge uh, January, the beginning of the year. So you will see that, you know, the two head is also, you know, represented like that. So a lot of these, you have to go through years and years compared pair them in a different level so you will find a very very subtle similarity between them okay so last week I also show you this I have to show you this in order to to uh, prepare you to go on so all this Taoism in Chinese you know we understand it as the way and Torah is also uh, 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 the rule of the Jewish people and, and in the Torah they also talk about the direct and the and the like the Arabs who in Muslim they also 
also talk, talk about the tariq. They are all exactly the same word. Also means the way. Exactly like the Greek says otos. So you say tau, to. These are all the word, ancient core sound of the word road. Okay. So um, when I put them together, it always means the way. And because it's the way you have to follow, it becomes the rule, the law, and the custom. And it also becomes the noun, becomes the leader of the way. And of course, direct, direct, and also become your English word, word direction um, of the way, okay? And because it always meets, you know, it becomes the cardinal point. And because of the crossing, the cross form, it also means to cross over, the, uh, the pass over. And of course, you know, even to this day, when you write crossing, you still use the X form, right? So um, in the pagan world, when you cross over from the death rim, you always cross at the river of death. So you always have a fairy too. And instead of that, you also have the idea of to escape. I will show you how it comes to be. The Tao, if you uh, look at Phoenician, they will have various forms from this to this and also to the T form uh, when the Roman sets in. And also, if you look at it religiously, you will see the Greek world, you know, other than the cross, you will also have this uh, uh, sideway cross. And of course, you know, the, this is the bishop's uh, staff. It also use an object to show the leader. So you will see that even in reality, in a very subtle way, um, and this Tao form still exists, you know. So the sound and the writing, the symbol and the objects, they are all blurred together. So you have to be very, very observant to observe all the similarity between this. And I compare um, uh, them, you know, to the East, you know, to the world that I know. These are all Chinese ancient oracle bones. You will see that this is how we uh, show the road and, and, and on the road, you know, when you see a hand leading uh, animal and this is how we say do or dao and this is how uh, the way the Taoism uh, means and then of course, you know, and we have another row uh, showing the way and you will see the A animal, the unseen energy too and also you see the hand, you know, uh, leading the animal and these two words we use to mean to cross over, to cross, cross over and then this this word is the ancient Chinese, you know, number of the last number, actually. It actually has the explanation of crossing over. So you can compare to the East and the West, okay? And then this is the bow that we use, you know, and in 3,000 something years ago, it already had the sound of do, and that means to to take you over to another bank, okay? And uh, look at this, you know, it, it uh, sets in, you know, this part here is actually the row, the row and the river it shows a lot of this tau sign and the sound is actually tau it means to escape you know some calamity so you will see that in somehow you know they seem to share very very similar concept in their head okay so let me continue on with this uh, this week's slides so uh, you will see that in the ancient time i think a lot of them are already compound symbols or what we call ligatures okay the sumerian have this form and have this form this form it means the first and the foremost and this form sometimes used uh, on a gold sometimes it also used in the in the part of the symbol of a ruler and it also used to mean the um, the ability to divide so look at the Sumerian sign later on uh, of the God you will see how it works the Chinese also have this this for us is the first number this for the ancient Chinese is just the last number okay and then the Greek, this is of course the, the cross that uh, the Christ uh, carry. And then of course, this is the cross, uh, the crystal, you know, uh, that the name actually bears. So, so you will all combine this together. Look at that. This has the sound of D. D is the Sumerian word for God. Look at that. A lot of people said it's a star, but look at this. Maybe it wasn't really a star. Maybe it's actually, you know, as another meaning, uh, you know, combining this the, together is the leader, the foremost, okay? Because, you know, if I bring in the Chinese word also, you will see the similarity here. And even the sound, um, as time went by, it became like this. It has the sound of Dai, and it exactly means a deity. And deity, what's the deity? But a judge, okay? What does the judge do? But judge. And the judge actually know how to divide, exactly like uh, the symbol 
people here in Sumerian means. And of course, you know, that's why in English, you, uh, the divide and the divine is actually share very, very similar sound. Because if uh, the a very just, just, you know, ruler will always know how to divine things to be, to maintain the justice and equality, okay? So of course, you know, the ancient king, who's the most famous one, but the King Solomon, right? So you will have all the story of King, uh, king Solomon splitting the baby into two. But you look at that, since very ancient time, this is the symbol of God, what the archaeologists always call the master of animals. Look at this. This is uh, the ancient king, you know, uh, holding two animals. Is it that they are actually telling you that they have the, uh, the justice to divide things so they can maintain the balance and the justice? Look at the Chinese word right there too. And then it isn't uh, only uh, to male. It actually, you will see that, you know, this is also a female right there. And if you keep uh, searching for the uh, images of the master of animals, you will see female and male alike. And all this animal can be a snake, can be goose, can be any kind of animal. So were they trying to tell you that it is the leader that is just, that whole justice in equality in their hand? Okay, so as I said, you know, the most famous one will be King Solomon, who, who is known to, to uh, divide things very wisely and then uh, appeal to the, to the love of a motherhood, that finally he found the real mother of the child and returned the child to the mother, right? You know the story well. But this is exactly why the name Solomon. Solomon came from the Greek, uh, uh, I mean Arabic Salam, and it also come from the Hebrew word Shalom, and it's actually come from peace. Look at this sign. I actually have found all this line right there, but once again, I'm not going to that direction because every single uh, meeting point actually spread out to different direction. But today I'm going to concentrate on showing you the ligature. And uh, once again, this is ancient Sumerian. It actually shows this A sign, you know, it shows this unseen energy. It actually to use to show, uh, to twist, to, to entwine. And the Chinese has also exactly the same way of showing this twisting movement. We all we were also using this A form as the unseen energy. So this two culture seem to be sharing very similar mental concept and, men, and, and, and written signs too. Okay, so as time went by, much, much later, I show you the Greek world when the Christianity sets in. And actually, they follow very, very ancient tradition. You see this ancient R right there is the R word stand for ram and also the head. Okay, and then you see the cross right there. And then the insistence of Jesus keeps saying that I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. So look at the early form, you have the Alpha and the Omega. And then the capital form, you know how to to write it but this is the uh, small form okay and and look at this and I can actually compare this to the early writing in ancient pictograph in Sumerian. This is actually goes back to a bull and and I mean no actually not bull to a cow a male uh, uh, cow okay I mean a female cow okay so this is the A form and then they actually carry the sound as time went by you can actually follow that all the sound and symbol actually took over by the male at the very beginning it was the age of goddesses so uh, as time went by you will see that um, it actually follows right there and and you will see that this form is actually an upside down of a ram horn okay so um, and I I will show you this Chinese writing of the ram and as time went by the, the, the ram actually gained favor from the people and it's interesting that people from herding bull they started to herd a lot of sheep also so uh, you will see that the whole thing changes as Alexander the Great also you know uh, wearing the ram horn you will see that uh, other than and then the uh, whole trend changes you will see that people are trying to assimilate you know all kinds of belief they because they have to try to convince all kinds of people of different belief and creed to believe in the same thing that they believe in so you will see that at this time because of the ram the the 
rash, the R word become a very important uh, sound. So you will see that the ram uh, brings out the sound Ra, also the sun god, and it also brings in the Ra's, you know, the, the Hebrew sound, you know, for head, and the rock, you know, for leader, for, for, for God, and also the Raja in Sanskrit, and the Rama in all the Hindu uh, beliefs, and Latin, uh, Ray, and of course, it finally become the royal. But I will show you this word right there in Chinese, it's actually Wong. Wong, it actually means the king. You will have to understand the R and the W also share very similar sound. Ra and Wa in ancient time is also very, very uh, confusing, okay? So you you can be sure that this Wong and Ra, and Ra, they were also pointing to the Greek, okay? If you think this is Greek, then you will compare all this different family so they really share one single core okay so and and I will show you this also and um, okay so as time went by you will see that we begin to call all the god Dios as you see D deity die and Dios and then the upside down uh, triangular tri triangle takes form okay but if you look back there and this pubic triangle is actually very very strong in ancient time this is a very female symbol it, the Chinese preserve it and then the ancient Sumerian have this you know, can it be that they actually was there, but the patriarchal took over, it actually took that away, and because the downward pointing triangle is a female sign, and then the upward pointing triangle is the uh, is the uh, male sign, so it actually become a very very male world and male god. Okay, so I go to the next one, and then I I bring out a lot of the ancient picture. The more ancient time you go, you actually see a lot of bulls right there. These are ancient Sumerian pictograph. This is Chinese uh, writing, and as time went by, you see more and more ram. You know, took over. This is the Chinese writing for ram, and then this is how you get the R writing. Okay in English and this is how you get the R writing in the Greek form okay and then um, this is the age of the Taurus when a lot of the people actually look at the bull as a as, as a model to for their civilization and then the the, the ages change you know so and the, the it comes the age of the areas this is the time when the Greek took over and then this is the time when the R uh, take on a very very important uh, sound and also how uh, the A become the leader of the writing system okay that's why it explains. It also explains to you how the ancient follow the ancient system. So uh, I will br cover briefly, you know, how all they cover up the matriarchal symbols, you know, from the pagan to change to Christianity. As I said, you know, this pubic triangle, in Chinese you will still see this, you know, as the uh, very important symbol of the female. But then, of course, you understand this. The start of David is actually the combination of 2D writing okay and then it's actually the combination of a male and a female part but then of course you know when the patriarch took over more and more we began to pay more attention to the male uh, dominated world but don't forget that the Jewish world is very very important for the uh, female bloodline until now if your mother is not Jewish you are not Jewish okay so uh, as time went by the people you know the, uh, the uneducated can only recognize this upward pointing triangle whenever they see this they know it is a temple they go in and worship their God sometimes it can be female sometimes it can be male but after God all oh, they call all this pagan pagan God the earth. but when the Christianity sets in the this God actually changed to another name from Dios it actually become Theos and as you, as you can hear me the sound actually doesn't change very much but visually it actually change a lot and the Theo actually as a, not, as, as a verb it actually means to see okay so you will see that uh, in reality at that time the Greek and the and the Roman uh, began to look for other symbol when they go to a temple before they, they look for this to 
go to a temple. But when when um, when the Jewish tradition becomes slowly, slowly become Christianity, they actually begin to look for this very ancient goddess symbol. And if you look at the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, you will see that from the outside, even in if it's in the desert, you look for that. This is the mother's breast. Okay, so they look for this. But inside, if you go in. Um, you will uh, see that you will understand it as a, an eye, an all seen eye that comes down, and then the symbol goes more and more abstract. As it as time went by, this will become that eye right there. And as, as you can see, if it's very pictorial, you can actually distinguish the gender. But the more abstract it is, the more uh, easily you know you can confuse both gender. And in a good way, you can actually use it to explain both things. You can understand it as a fountain. You can understand it as a spring source. But slowly, because the petra took over it become the sign of the sun it also become the eye but the eye of a bull everything become male so you will see that slowly the pagan disappear and christianity took over of course you know the patri uh, the, the patriarch took over and become a male dominated world and what we live in this world now is actually the end product of all those thousands of years of taking over of the female power okay so um, uh, again, I show you, you know, how ancient shows the way, okay? All this, this is ancient Egyptian pictograph. This is ancient Sumer, uh, no, sorry, ancient Sumerian pictograph. This is Sumerian picto, uh, uh, cuneiform. This is Akkadian cuneiform. This is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. This is linear B and A, the car. This, you can understand, is the cardia and the heart of, and the central of the city, okay? Where two rows meet, okay? And then, look at this. This is the Chinese writing of the row. You will see exactly the same thing. And then, uh, as time went by, this uh, word gradually has the sound of do or tao. For us, it is the way, and where the leader leads the way. Of course, it was still in the Bronze Age. People were still leading the animals around. So you will see that this is the Chinese first symbol. This is the uh, uh, Greek first uh, cross. This is the uh, Chinese last symbol. And we have the same of Kwai or Kwai. You can understand it as the French Kwa. French croix is actually means to cross, okay? So in the explanation, we actually understand it as do to cross over. It's actually like the Chinese holding the Tao sign, okay? So in Greek, you have as hato, it means the last. And you, of course, you have the crystal. And then look at this sign. It actually holds the first and the last. And this way is the cardo. The cardo is the Latin word for the, the, for the road, the thoroughfare from north and east, okay? Okay, so I have to stop right there. Thank you for watching, okay? Thanks.